Previously, Duke Atlas couldn't accept the fact that Tatiana chose to marry the hero, Kynal, over him. The imperial consort, his aunt Charlize, talked with him to stop his whining and informed him that she would be arranging a marriage to a more refutable house than the house Karshien. Tatiana's first night with her husband, Kynal, was okay but unexpectedly, Kynal noticed that Tatiana had a fever so he let her wife just rest and sleep. After their first night, Tatiana was woken up by the maid she didn't recognize before. That same morning, the butler informed her that her husband was away for two weeks to fight monsters for the safety of their territory, which he had been doing ever since. That was also the time that Tatiana assigned her maid, and, to check the inventories of the deliveries after the butler served the same tea, which she knew was of low-grade, quality opposite to the butler's statements. Her husband started to send boxes to Tatiana, and she and her maid were the only ones who knew what was inside of those boxes, it was full of treasures. Tatiana thought that her husband was more wealthy than her sisters after seeing those treasures. When her husband came back from a mission, she confirmed that those treasures he sent were only a portion of what he had as there were more buried underground somewhere. He also told Tatiana that since they were already married, it was also hers now including the heart of a flask, a dragon's heart that money can't even buy. The Viscountess, mother of Tatiana, had a confrontation with the imperial consort. The imperial consort informed the Viscountess that she would regret the humiliation they brought upon the house atlas. After that, the Viscountess told her eldest daughter what the imperial consort did in their house would come back to her and that Tatiana would face consequences after giving her so many times to come back to her mother, but Tatiana didn't listen to her and married the man her mother hated the most. Tatiana confronted again her husband about the boxes full of treasures. She told him that he should properly store them to prove that all of them belonged to him, but he does not want that to happen because he does not want to leave his name behind anywhere else in this world. Tatiana scolded him even more and reminded him that her name was Tatiana Townsend so he already left his name to her. She added that he should stop acting like he was living for nothing when he already had a role as her husband, and he must do his part. The Viscountess ordered Count Auburden to do a thorough investigation on Kynal's assets. The Count reported that he could not find any bank account that he holds on to their place, and it seems like his mansion was only authorized as his belongings. The Viscountess was not surprised about the report and ordered the Count to stop the investigation as it was useless. When her mother left, Anesha told her husband that she was worried about her mother's actions in the future. She knew that her mother would get revenge on people who humiliated her, and she knew that she would not give up that easily even if it was the archbishop, the imperial consort, or even death himself. Tatiana visited the Leverand Central Library to search for the worth of her husband's treasures, especially the heart of the flask. She found out how dangerous it was when getting that precious treasure, which made her angry since her husband doesn't care at all about the dangers he will be facing. When Tatiana was on her way back home, she went to a shop to buy a dress since her husband repeatedly told her to buy new ones with the treasure he had given to her. But she encountered the people she didn't want to see anymore. It was the girl that Duke Atlas cheated with, and what made her irritated more was that Duke Atlas was also there who created a scene about Tatiana formally speaking with him. Natalia convinced the Duke to calm down. She thinks that Tatiana must be embarrassed to appear in front of her old fiancé with that ugly dress. But Tatiana was unbothered with how she dressed in front of them, she even pointed out how she would always see Natalia almost naked, like she was bragging about her indecency. Natalia got mad, but Tiara was not finished yet and advised her to have a bit more self-respect. Before leaving, she showed how disappointed she was to the owner since she judged her clients poorly and Tatiana doubted that she would last long in that industry. When the Duke saw Tatiana leaving, he wanted to follow her, but Natalia stopped her and complained about how she was treated by his ex-fiancé. To her surprise, the Duke shoved her to follow Tatiana outside. He called her name, not minding the scene he was making. When Tiara heard him, she faced him and reprimanded him for calling her by her name. Even how obvious that she did not want to talk to him, he still insisted. He exclaimed that he was just using Natalia, just to fill what he needed from Tiara. Instead of pity, 
Tiara felt disgusted by what he said when she remembered how he hilariously cheated on her place. She wondered how low he could be to be like this to her. With a serious look on her face, she reminded him that she was already married, and her husband would also be offended by his action. It made the Duke think that she already offered herself to Kynal, whom he was referring to as an animal, and that does not make her a virtuous woman at all. He questioned what was so great about him that made Tiara decide to abandon her family and her reputation. He insisted she tell her reason now of how Kynal got her into his arms since they were already on the topic. Tiara frowned at him as he sounded like he did not deserve to be respected as a duke, so she told him to stop. For Tiara, Duke Atlas is nothing compared to Kynal, whom she trusted that he would never do something dirty like what he did. She was about to leave, but Duke Atlas grabbed her hands, preventing her from leaving. He was not threatened, and he even urged her to call her husband, he was so full of himself and thought low of Kynal just because of what he thinks his status in their society. Tiara begins to feel anxious when the Duke is already closer to her. But in one swift move, Kynal came and made the Duke helpless with how he locked his arms on his back. Tiara was astonished by his sudden arrival, just in time to save her. Kynal told the Duke to just talk to him instead if he had something to say to his wife. Duke Atlas could not fight and shouted to Tiara to let him go, but Kynal did not like how he called her by her name. He twisted his arms more, to make it painful, like he did not care even though he was a Duke. When the Duke screamed in pain, Tiara held Kynal's arm to calm her husband and told him to stop, so he let go of the Duke. Duke Atlas almost stumbled, and he was so mad for the humiliation and what Kynal did. He threatened him by reporting him to the palace so he could be punished, he was so confident that Kynal would be begging on his knees before him. He will make sure that Kynal would regret this. Kynal just smirked after hearing his nonsense whines. He knew that Alexei could not make it because he was smart enough to ask for something greater rather than having that duke title he seemed to be so proud of. Kynal informed him that he had received immunity for any dealings with the nobles instead of becoming a duke. After hearing that, the duke was surprised so his threats a while ago were useless. Kynal warned him that he would be merciless if that happened again. Instead of listening to them, Tiara turned her back and began to leave. When Kynal saw her leaving without bringing him, he rushed to follow his wife while Duke Atlas was left in the street frowning. They were just silent while striding along the street, Tiara was obvious that she was thinking something that made her upset again, while Kynal was still clueless. When Tiara stopped walking, Kynal asked where she was heading. He worries that she must be tired of having a long walk that day. He even asked why she did not purchase a dress, which made Tiara mad as he was talking about dresses again. Tiara faced him and unpleasingly asked him if he had been following her all the time. Kynal did not answer, but she knew that he did. She thought that he did that because he was worried that she would run away, but Kynal defended that he was just doing his part as her husband like what she told him. He reminded her what she told him about doing his part if he didn't want to see her run away which he didn't want to happen. When she heard his reason, she just caressed her temple in disappointment. She corrected that his way is not how a husband plays his part, he should have just come with her. Kynal reasoned that he might just cause her more trouble if he accompanied her, which made Tatiana confused. He thought that she would not be comfortable if she bought clothes or even walked down the street if he were around since it had been like that all his life. He admits that he does not know how to be a husband besides offering money to her. Tiara could not hold it in, but exclaimed how clueless he was. She pointed out what she wanted. After marrying her, they were supposed to live under the same roof, but as his wife, she does not even know about his whereabouts, nor the day he will be coming home. And now that she was doing the same thing as him, he had the urge to hate her doings. She also pointed out that he did not even consummate their marriage. Kynal was surprised to hear that. Kynal knew that she was not ready and well yet, but before he could talk, Tatiana reminded him about wanting her for her body and appearance before. He asked her if she was ready now. He was also aware that she barely went out of their room, which made him think that she was too fragile. While he was still speaking, Tiara reached his face. 
Kainal froze for a moment when she suddenly kissed him to tell him that she was already ready and that she was not sick anymore. Kainal pulled her to kiss her again and Tiara could feel how her husband wanted her. They came home together to continue what they were doing on the street. Tiara was nervous and wanted to take a break but Kainal could not wait any longer, so he kissed her again while he was on top of her. On the next day, Tiara woke up without Kainal beside her. When she tried to get up, she suddenly felt the pain from what they did last night. She glanced at the emptiness of the bed beside her, she thought that Kainal probably left again for his job of killing a monster, without even informing her. She was expecting him to stay at least the day after they consummate their marriage, but she thinks that it is already too much to ask since it was not part of their agreement. While Tiara was wondering about how Kainal restrained himself from this all the time, the maids came to clean their room. When the maid was about to clean their bed, she was surprised at what she saw, while Tatiana thought that it was a long passionate night. She then decided to get herself ready for the whole day before going out of the room. When she went out, she could not believe that her husband was just at their home the whole time. She was not expecting to see him in their house like he used to. She questioned why she was even tearing up upon seeing her husband, maybe because she might have gone mad at the thought that he left again. Kainal was confused about her reaction while Tiara was already annoyed because all he could just say was, what and why. For the first time, Kainal told her that he would be coming home late today, but he promised that he would not stay out all night. This is what Tiara has always complained about since then and now. She could not believe that her husband was obeying her. After remembering their night, Kainal admitted that Tatiana made a valid point about acting like a husband if he wanted her to be the lady of the house. Before her husband left, she invited him to have breakfast with her, just like a normal wedded couple does since neither of them has done anything like that. While eating, Tiara was silently observing her husband. She was surprised to see that Kainal knew table manners etiquette, just like a noble person does. Kainal noticed how Tiara stared at him, so he wondered if there was something wrong with how he ate and how he was not good enough for her, but Tiara immediately opposed what he said. She told him how she was amused at how much he could eat. Kainal answered that he ate more because he did not know when he would have his next meal. He added that it was nothing new since it was always like that when he was growing up. After Tiara expressed what she has noticed with the way he eats, Kainal pointed out her food. Tiara considered her food as already a lot when it was just a little portion of the food they had on the table. She said that she needed all the energy that she could consume because she had work that she had to take charge of. When Kainal asked what was it, Tatiana answered him with a big smile saying that it was the role of being the lady of their house. Tiara informed her husband how he put her in charge of being a lady in the house, so from now on, she expects that she will be busy. After what she said, it made Kainal wonder if his house requires a lot of work or if nothing in there is to her liking. How he questioned everything made Tiara realize that he was already contented with how things were right now. He noticed the emptiness of the long table and pondered a little, then he suggested that they could go to the main street again since she did not get a chance to purchase anything yesterday. But Tiara was just annoyed by how he thought a wife should be. It is obvious what type of perception he has with noble women. Kainal said that she did not have to do the household chores because it was the duty of their butler and maids. His lieutenant always reports to him how their butler took charge of everything in his house so she should not stress herself to get involved in any of that. Kainal was being considerate to her so he suggested she take a rest while pondering what she really liked to do. Tiara tried to clarify to him if he was against everything she would do in the house, which he answered no. So, his wife commanded him that all he must do is to watch. The maids made themselves busy while they were glancing at their masters who were just standing there. They are intimidated by the presence of the couple and they have no idea why they are watching them. When Kainal noticed something strange, he could not tell what his wife was planning when she asked for ten more minutes. She said that it was how long the servants had kept their masters just standing there. Sooner, the butler came while apologizing for being late and Tiara accepted it since she was aware of how busy their butler was. 
He reported that they were busy on the second floor while changing the curtains that were imported from Roisha, which is perfect for keeping out the midnight sun, and he is certain that the lady of the house would like it which she agreed. Tiara asked the butler to serve them the tea he used to give to her, which he said was from the teak. The butler gleefully accepted her request and asked for a moment to make that tea. Their maid served them the tea, but the reaction of Tiara was not even pleased with the tea she was drinking like how she tasted it before. The butler thanked his masters for letting him serve someone like them, but Tatiana interrupted him. She still managed to praise his service for her, but she admits how disappointed she was in how other people deceived their loyal butler after claiming that the tea was from the teak. While trying to catch the butler, Kynel was just watching what she was doing like what she had told him to do. Tiara repeated his claim that he bought the tea leaves from the department store of Bachman, but the butler agitatedly answered where the tea leaves came from. Tiara highly doubted his answer because she knew that the farm manager could have died now after selling them the product owned by her mother. The butler was not aware that the house Karshien owned a tea farm in Teak, but what surprised him more was when Tiara said that the whole tea farm in that region belonged to her mother. She did not let herself be bothered about the department store where the butler bought the tea leaves because they belonged to her sister. The butler was taken aback so he just admitted that he had just been mistaken and asked for forgiveness since there was so much work for him to take care of. However, Tiara forgave him, but she told him that this was the only time that he would be forgiven and there was no second time. Tiara opened the topic about the curtains which he claimed was from Roisha. In the back of the butler's mind, he thought about how he already forged the paperwork of that transaction, so he continued to tell more information about it and involved the port where it was delivered to confirm their transaction. She declined the invitation of the butler to see the import documents by pointing out how his claims became strange to her. Tiara knew that Roisha did not export fabric from December to March to restrict access to the fabrics. While stating the facts, the eyes of the butler widen when Tiara accuses him that he must be perhaps a smuggler or a liar butler to his employer. The butler remained his head down in humiliation after Tiara confirmed her assumptions about how he does his jobs. For the past two weeks, she had a good look from the tableware to the furniture around the house. She saw how the butler tried to do his job well, but the good look of Tiara in everything could not be ever fooled. He lowered his head down more and claimed that everything was just a misunderstanding that made Kynel stand up and want to punish him. Tiara raised her hand to stop Kynel, which he obediently obeyed. She glared at the butler and made the teacup as an example of his work where he found something with a pattern that somehow resembles the real Ambroke. She knew that the real tableware from Ambroke was unbreakable, so she purposely dropped the teacup with a tea which surprised the butler and Kynel. The cup was broken and the tea spilled on her dress, where she found out that she was also wearing a low-quality dress that was not worth its price. With her statements and examples, she concluded that their butler had been giving her husband a fake expensive bill the whole time. All the maids were surprised and she called in to hand her the list they had collected about the expenses on their house and calculated how much their butler pocketed. The butler was shocked after hearing that and asked why she was interested in things all of a sudden when she did not care about their expenses before. There it was revealed that she purposely showed him that she was not interested in their household before so she could take a look around freely. She was surprised when she realized that it would be over 100 million gold pocketed by their butler. He tried to save himself by explaining how he managed to fill brand new items when he came to the mansion that was as good as empty. He also calculated that their expenses added up because they needed to hire more servants and he was confident that they were fortunate enough to keep capable servants since he was a good judge of character. The lady of the house agreed with how good a judge of character he was in choosing his employer and not the servants. It was like every time she spoke, the butler could feel that there was something she was going to reveal that added to his nervousness. She then asked her husband if he knew the costs of their household per month, which he answered that he had no idea. Those employees were lucky enough to have that kind of employer like Kynel. He was a wealthy employer, but at the same time, he was inattentive, which was rare, in Leverin. She now questioned how their maids acted a while ago when they were just standing there to watch them. 
If they were a capable servant that he hired, they must have attended to their employer when they saw them standing in the middle of the house rather than just passing around like they did not exist in that place. Tiara knew that they were paid more than they deserved just to sneak around and watch their employer's actions. She had no plan on keeping those kinds of servants, so she decided to fire them all. They were horrified at their decision and one maid asked to give them a chance since it was unfair. When Tatiana looked at her, she just told her to go to her mother to beg for that second chance. Tiara knew well that her mother planted someone in their household to watch over them. The maid asked how she knew about it so Tiara told her that it was obvious since the maid already knew what she liked. She then called the servant who came to fix their bed. She told her to go to her mother and report to her what she saw in their bed that would prove that they already consummated their marriage. She even reminded the maid to tell her mother how passionate they were. Tiara knew her mother well, she would use her power to say that their marriage was invalid. Now that they have consummated their marriage, she just hopes that the people she has planted in their house will immediately report to her what she has discovered as she will never let her mother have her way. Before leaving the hall, Tiara reminded her husband that they would postpone the dress shopping they were planning since she was busy now to fix this problem. Kynal asked his wife if he should end the butler's life, but she just decided to let him stay for a while since they still have an amount to settle with him. They were certain that he would not run away because the black wolves would not let him have his way to do that. After catching the dishonesty of their butler, Tiara is not done thinking about the upcoming problems. She remembered what happened yesterday on their encounter with the Duke and she wonders how that person will take action since he is someone who does not admit his own mistakes. However, Kynal refuses to listen while she is talking about another man, so he does not care about whatever that Duke will do. Despite that trouble, Tiara somehow felt relieved about the immunity he got to any dealings with the noble people, but she did not know it was just a lie. Kynal thought to himself that he could just ask about that now to the crown prince. Their conversation was interrupted when Owen called his captain from the outside of the window. His wife urged him to go to Owen since he had been waiting for him for a while. Before leaving, Kynal questioned what she would do when he left. He worries that she will be left alone after what happened. She assured him that she had and with her. Kynal said it was not he was referring to. She didn't have anyone to help her other than Anne. Tatiana told him that she never did, to begin with, which surprised Kynal after hearing that. She would be busy hiring a new butler. When Kynal asked what kind of butler she was looking for, she said that she needed a butler who would be devoted enough to serve their household. She does not require it to be perfect at the job, but all that she needs is someone who has a good integrity that could not be blinded by money. She thinks that it would be nice if she hired someone good with numbers, with a strong authority who could supervise his staff well, and someone strong enough to guard her in any place. Hiring new staff is an undoubtedly difficult task. She needs to be more careful in choosing someone for the sake of her plans. Kynal was curious about the plan she was referring to but instead of answering, she just reminded him that his work was waiting for him. Owen interrupted their talk when he shouted to call his captain again. Owen was already complaining due to his late coming. He informed his captain that Lt. Gerald needed to talk with him right away. But he was taken aback when Kynal said to his wife that he already had a perfect candidate. When Kynal left, his minds were clouded by the expectations he had for Tiara before. He recalled how his wife questioned the way he wanted her to live now that she was no longer a Karshien. It seems impossible to believe that Tatiana Karshien would be working instead of living her life before she got married. He does not plan on changing her lifestyle and wants her to be the glamorous and proud queen she used to be. He didn't know what a wife was supposed to do, but at least, he didn't want her to wither away by his side. He realized that she was different from what he imagined. She was much prouder that he remembered and laughed more than he expected. He even remembered how passionate she was when they consummated their marriage and how she invited him to dinner before he left home. He smiled when he realized that she would be mad again if he did not keep his promise. Lt. Gerald immediately greeted him when he came. He noticed that Owen was not with him when he ordered him to call their captain. 
but Kynal told him that Owen would never be coming back because he already got a new job. In the back of his mind, he thought that he was already killed by him because of his mouth, but he wondered who in the world would hire someone hard to handle him other than their captain. He asked their captain if he would talk to Owen but Kynal said that there's no need to look for him and added that if ever he comes back, he should end his life which the lieutenant made speechless. Kynal asked him why he was looking for him. Lieutenant Gerald told him that he had a guest. Before he could finish his words, Kynal was surprised when the crown prince showed up while apologizing for the unannounced visit he did. Hi guys! This is the end of season 1. I will continue this story once there are more chapters released so stay tuned to my channel. For the time being, you can watch other interesting manhwa stories like this on my channel, and don't forget to subscribe.